Welcome to that time I got reincarnated as a slime, Season 2 Part 1 Recap. This is an action comedy Isakardi series starring Rimuru Tempest, the world's most powerful slime, and his many friends in the Jura Tempest Federation, a union of disparate races in the Jura Forest region. But this is no ordinary MC power trip. Rimuru aims to create a peaceful and tolerant nation for all, with his own glory being a far lower priority. So without any further explanations, enjoy watching. But before that, please click that subscribe button to support the channel and to keep making new cool recaps. Falmouth and Rubirio's attack Tempest, while Rimuru was away checking in on the other Rolder kids who had been under Shizu's care before she died. Our well-known character, Hinata Sakaguchi ambushes him on his way back to Jura City. Her motivation is Shizu's death, which she believes was the result of a battle with the Rimuru. In an attempt to win her over, Rimuru explains what happened and talks things through with her. However, Hinata didn't listen, she actually hates monsters, and thinks they're the enemy of humankind. It's likely that Rimuru's battle with Hinata Sakaguchi is the one of the times we see our Rimuru really overwhelmed in combat. While Rimuru and Hinata are fighting it out at each other, things are really bad for the citizens of Rimuru's city as the Knights of Falmouth attacks. It is really shocking to see some of our powerful characters in the series being defeated one by one, and the situation is looking really worse with every second. It looks like things on Rimuru's side are getting bad. Rimuru pushed to use his last trump card, Gluttony Skill. While fighting, he used his clone and have him fighting Hinata, Hinata, in the other hand, used her full power and destroyed Rimuru's clone. Hinata full back thinking she killed Rimuru. Rimuru used this chance rush back to Tempest. The Holy Church of Rubirios had already built an anti monster barrier, and Mulan created a second one on top of it. The Japanese other rollers under Falmouth's employ are known as Shogo, Karara, and Kaiuya, attack first. The monsters of Tempest are greatly weakened cause of the anti-monster barrier, making it easier for the Falmouth army to overwhelm them. The other rollers have given Falmouth and Rubirios a motive to kill every monster in Tempest, by provoking the monsters into fight. Even Rimuru's trusty secretary, Shayon, is killed in the fight between the two sides. Nothing could have prepared Rimuru for the tragedy he witnessed that day, but things worsen when he discovers Shayon's lifeless body among the dead. Something inside Rimuru snaps as he is struck by sadness but unable to truly experience it, due to his reincarnation as a monster. But hope is kept alive when the adventurer Eren reveals a well-known fairy tale about a dragon princess who became a demon lord to revive her draconic companion. Despite the fact that the chances of reviving every single person who died that day are only 3%, Rimuru remains hopeful, choosing to discard whatever remains of his humanity in order to reach true demon lord status. According to legend, the dragon princess goes on a rampage and took 10,000 people in order to evolve into a true demon lord, and she used her newfound power to revive the corpses of her dead companions. Rimuru has decided to become a demon lord. He reveals that the kingdom of Falmouth's army is on its way. He will nourish on 10,000 of them in order to evolve into a demon lord. Rimuru decides to use every piece he has. He forgives Mulan for her actions and provides her with an artificial heart, freeing her from Clayman's hands. In exchange, Mulan is to aid Tempest's retaliation. Rimuru organizes four teams to deal with the statues that keep the anti-monster barriers, weakening Tempest's monsters. Rimuru himself moves to the enemy camp, where he uses a never-before-seen ability, the horrific spell known as Megiddo. Rimuru is about to complete the sacrifice of 10,000 soldiers in order to be reborn as the new demon lord. Above the Falmouth soldiers, he unleashes slimes. The slimes serve as mirrors, reflecting and directing his laser attacks to instantly kill every one of the soldiers. Rimuru kills all of the warriors except Rayheim, Etamales, Falgan, and Raisin. 
Raisin went to see King Etymales, who ordered him to teleport them out of here. Raisin responds that it is impossible due to the barrier. Falvin chose to confront Rimuru, but he and Raisin were killed when they stepped out of a tent. Rimuru approached the king. The king apologized and attempted to outsmart Rimuru, but Rimuru cuts his hand. Rehan cried in front of Rimuru to be spared because he is a powerful voice within the Western Holy Church. Great Sage reports that the acquisition of the unique skill, Merciless, has been successful. Rimuru began to feel dizzy after the process was completed, so he summoned three archdemons. He assigns them the task of dealing with Raisin, who has managed to survive. Archdemon's leader accepted the offer, because he wanted to join Rimuru's army. The Great Sage reveals that Rimuru has harvested the souls of all the soldiers in the area. Rimuru switched back to his slime form and ordered Ranga to restrain Etymolus and Rayheim, while also protecting him until they arrived at Tempest City to start the Harvest Festival. The Archdemon has managed to find Raisin, who has recently revived. Raisin believes he has a chance against Archdemon. The Archdemon informed Raisin that he would be restricting him. Raisin declined, saying that he would not go down without a fight. Archdemon assured him that he would not be killed as the master had ordered. Meanwhile, the harvest festival begins and Great Sage calculated all the festival requirements to be completed. Great Sage reveals many new unique skills have been successful acquired. The festival has just been finished with a huge flash of light. All members of the monster nations fell asleep. As the bestowing of gift upon those connected to Rimuru begins. And Rimuru successfully reborn as a true demon lord. Rimuru rushes toward Shayon and performs an incarnation next to her and the other dead monsters. He gathered the souls of all the soldiers he had killed and tried to bestow them on the dead. However, one soul was missing. The Arctimans arrive and two of them sacrifice their souls to finish the procedure. Rimuru bestows those souls inside the bodies of the dead. Shayon's body began to recover, and her wounds began to heal. Her horns started to grow back, and other monsters began to regenerate as well. Rimuru ordered the great sage to begin the secret art of spirit resurrection. Grucius notices the newborn demon lord's power. Even Lord Carrion couldn't do what Rimuru is doing. Shayon's body and fingers started to move, showing that she is waking up. With Rimuru's new power, he can fulfillment his first promise to free the storm dragon Veldora. And, as expected, this is now a walk in the park for the newly born demon lord. Now Veldora is free, inhabiting a new body, and our dear slime finally reunites with his old friend. And happy ending for everyone. Well, in my opinion, the second season is one of the best Izikai titles in last year. The anime has been continuously entertaining and exciting, and each episode has made me excited to watch the next one. This season has shown an excellent expansion of the world, plot, and development of Rimuru as a character, with the anime managing to bring out darker elements without losing its personality. But what else is in store for our lovable slime? That's what we'll find that in the next part of this season. So see you guys in the next video, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video, if the video hit 100 likes, I will make a recap for the sixth part of the season 2.